Okay, this is a follow-on video on the last two videos I made for the creation of a single VLT fabric. I am at the Dell site called Fabric Design Center. The address is ftc.dell.com. Once you create an account and uh, you are able to log in, it's going to give you the terms of use. And once you go in there, uh, it's going to give you a tool some type of a wizard that is going to help you to create uh, a network so in this case uh, i don't want to get too carried away it's a lot of information here but basically you can do a turnkey solution let's say that your uh, environment is going to require some vxrail appliances that combines storage networking and compute in a basically uh, in a cluster fashion that you can have for or more nodes in a cluster, for example. And then uh, there is other other uses like a virtual SAN, um, using also a cluster of nodes. Power store, which is also a another way to do a, a nice CASI type of a storage, a shared storage. And then you have Isilon that is like a network attached storage that can scale to petabytes. It's a really powerful uh, storage solution so basically we can do a design of a network that will support all these different type of workloads or you can build your own network design so in this case just to add some color let's go and do some VxRail appliances uh, we're gonna select that VxRail fabric and then we're gonna go ahead and add a workload it's going to be a single rack so i don't need to span mo across multiple um, racks right the, the cluster is going to be just contained within a single rack so i'm going to go ahead and add a workload in this case the appliances are going to be the e665 uh, nodes i'm going to say that we're going to have for this um, example let's go ahead and do four nodes just to keep it simple and then let's say that this each node is going to have 225 gig interface ports and we're going to have an add-on NIC with an, an additional two more ports of 25 gig so that's going to give us a total of four uh, 25 gigs um, adapters and these are some of the the VLANs that will be needed for um, the VxRail to operate right the, the VLAN 101 for the VxRail management uh, bond zero which is going to be one of these uh, these two uh, BM NIC 0 and BM NIC 2 and bond 1 BM NIC 1 and BM NIC 3 and that's and, and then here for VLAN uh, 102 and 103 in bond 1 is going to be for vSAN virtual SAN and for also for vMotion being able to move uh, VMs from one host to another uh, very powerful tool and then you can add more VLANs as needed uh, for your project. So once you select the, the bare minimum, it's going to go ahead and say, well, you have the model EC65. And then you're going to have four nodes. And we're going to go to the next uh, next uh, screen. And then it's telling us, hey, because you have only a few nodes, you can get away with the 5212s, which uh, is a switch that has 12 ports of 1025 right so if we're going to be using two four six eight ports right four ports going to one switch four ports going to the other the 5212 is a perfect switch for that particular purpose and i'm going to keep it simple i'm going to leave it there i'm not going to go to the 24 port or the 48 port let's keep it simple and let's keep let's keep it moving so this is rack one these two switches are going to be in vlt mode in order to be high available for this dual home servers that are going to have two NICs going two ports going to one switch two ports going to the other and that's how we create our fault tolerance and then of course we're going to have another switch a one gigabit switch for the out of band management so that way this switch is not connected to these uh, two um two rack switches that will service the traffic for these nodes but this out of band management is going to be to uh, manage the the VxRail nodes on the management port called an eye track and and also and, and, and that's it um, and over here it says that 16 ports will be used 
it's gonna be 4, 8, 12, 16 ports of 25 gig and the bandwidth in gigabits per second is gonna be 400 and um, I just want to understand why what does what does this mean so let, let me get a calculator here so let's do 16 times 25 so it's telling us that the bandwidth uh, for the downlinks is going to be 400 gig uh, down that, that's what it means so if we move if we move over to the next uh, tab which is going to be the network view this is going to give us a logical a logical representation of the selection we made with the four nodes uh, VXREL. Uh, it has the the, the four, um, it, it's just showing one just to minimize the number of cables, but it's actually um, the, the pair of two ports going to one, two ports going to the other. And this is the VLT that we talk about in the example I gave on the configuration of using the CLI. These are the, 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 the VLT links. And, uh, and then you have an option to connect to another another network whether it's layer 3 or uh, layer 2 uh, over here the legend says the VLT MC lag right we call it VLT since we call it VPC then you have the port links etc so let's go to the wiring diagram so on this uh, Dell Fabric Design Center you're going to be able to go into the next tag which is the wiring diagram and you can dive in into the first switch for example and it will give you like, for example, a recommendation like, okay, so let's say that you have node, uh, let's look at node, let me see, okay, so that's node 2, that's node 4, and then on the other side, you have node, node 1 and node 3, okay? And, uh, okay, so so that, that, that is right. And then um, this uh, Ethernet, let me see if I can find, and these two ports right here are going to be for the VLT. It's going to connect to the VxRail Fabric Leaf 2 Ethernet 15. And this is going to the Leaf 2 um, Ethernet port 14. So these are going to be the two VLT links. And these others are going to be the, um, the, 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 the VxRail node um, uplinks. In this case, uh, these are the downlinks, right? So let's go ahead and close uh, this one. So if we look at leaf number two, yeah, we're gonna have the same thing here. Now the BXRL leaf uh, one is gonna say that it's going to the leaf one instead of leaf two, right? Because this is leaf two, it's going to leaf one. So these are the VLT ports and these are the ports for the VXRLs. Now, one cool thing about this is that you can export this and you can download it as a PDF. And let's say that you have 10 switches or 20 switches. Uh, it's going to help you to, you know, just give you a wiring diagram. So that way you don't have to do it from scratch. So so as long as you do a standard configuration, you're going to be able to to take advantage of these, uh, these tools, okay? So let, let's see if it's on the downloads. Yeah, it's right there. So let's open it. And this is how it looks like in a PDF format. You can zoom in. And see the the two switches that's very basic so that's something nice to have so let's close that uh, let's see what else we have here available let's go to the next tab so this is the bill of materials and uh, you can choose whether you want to use copper cables or you want to use um, transceivers optical transceivers uh, I'm not gonna get into those details but there is something that you can tweak by editing right the type of connections you want to have and uh, uh, so just to keep it simple, we have two switches here in this build of materials. We have the type of power cords that are by default. You can change this to the PDU style. And then it says that we have a couple cables for the VLT. In this case, these suckers are one meter. You can do it 0.5 meters if they're going to be close to each other. Um, if they're going to be, you know, you're going to have a little gap in between them. I don't know why, but then go with the one meter. And then these are the twin X cables, copper cables go that for the downlinks to your VxRail appliances. So in this case, you have 16 cables of three meters, just in case the four VxRail nodes are to the bottom of the rack, for example. So that, that's, a, that, that's cool. You have that bill of, bill of materials that account for 16 cables. Uh, for external connectivity, 
I didn't really specify, but it just gave me an option that if I want to connect to another network, I can use this 25 gigabit SR transceiver. So this can be 10 gigabit um, gigabit Ethernet transceivers to connect to another network or a one gigabit um, gigabit transceiver, which is going to be a choke point. Uh, and, and, and also we can do 100 gig uh, going from those uh, 52 uh, 12s, depending on how you set it up to another network. Uh, these are some of the cables that they recommend for uplinking. Uh, the, the, yeah, I just didn't specify what we're doing here. That's fine. These are the server, server models. And then it's telling us that we have the Ataban management switch, which is the N3248E, which is a, a switch that has 48 ports of 1 gigabit base T and four SFP plus ports, for example, we can put the ports toward the back of the, uh, toward the back of the rack using the power supply to IO panel airflow, meaning that the ports in this fashion, they're going to be on the back of the rack in line with the servers. So that way it's easier to cable and the power supplies, uh, the same thing, uh, PSU to IO. Uh, let's see what else, uh, the, the cables can be changed, so, but, but this is just give you an idea. Then once you go to the network configurations, uh, let's say that you have your NTP servers, you have your SMP servers, you have your DNS servers, you have your syslog servers. So then in this area, you can add those IP addresses uh, and those, those are going to be entered into the configuration files for each of the switches. And uh, so that's pretty cool. That's another good thing that, that you can do. This is an example of a management subnet. Uh, the starting IP address, the default gateway. And it can go more granular once you go into the details. In this case, if, if we look at the work workload workload networks, it's gonna it's gonna start doing the VLANs, right? 101, 102, 103, the the special management VLAN for VXRL 3939, and then it, it will get, describe what it what each VLAN is for, and then you can edit the IP address, which is pretty cool. And uh, once you you edit that. And it's going to go into your configuration file. So then it's going to be very easy to deploy your, your network. I mean, it's going to be super, super simple. Uh, it's always recommended that you get professional services. So that way you can get up to speed a lot faster, right? If time is money, uh, just get the professional services from Dell. And uh, if not, this is another way to do it. Um, let's see what else. So you can export uh, these files in, in an in a ASCII format or you can export it as an Ansible playbook, just in case you're automating your deployment. And the operating system in this case is gonna be operating system 10. Let's see how the uh, config file looks like in ASCII. And uh, look at this, it's gonna give you like, like a basic view of a running configuration here. And then it's gonna give you all the commands needed to enter the interface management, the no IP address. Uh, the, uh, you can you can edit this in, in, in the other section I was showing you about network configuration. You can actually populate the IP address that you want for this one, etc. You can look at the VLANs that were created. And, and as you can see, uh, it will do the best practice for VxRail. So that's one of the advantages of going with the Dell OS 10 switches and the Dell uh, VxRail appliances and PowerScale and all the Dell technologies for storage, for compute, for hyper um, hyper converged systems, because then it's gonna just install the best practices for each of the ports. In this case, um, how to do the spanning tree guard, uh, the, the MTU, which is 9216 jumbo frames, and, and it's gonna just do the best practices for each of the ports, uh, for, for each of the traffics. So that, that's pretty cool. You can So you can also download this um, and it's going to download all these files as a, in a zip, zip format. I just need to let it download. Let's open the file. Well, no, I just want to see the folder if I can. Yeah. And that's the folder right there. FDC, VX rail fabric configuration, for example, let's see what else. Yeah. That's about it. And then in there, you're going to have the two files for the two switches. So that's pretty cool. Uh, leaf one, leaf two. Let's see what else. And, and that's about it. Um, you can also save your, your design just in case you want to come back and, uh, and, um, and tweak it, uh, further. Uh, let me see what else pops up here. 
No, that's about it. And, and once you have those uh, those files, you can go into OneNote or you can go into uh, Excel, and, and then you can just just drop it into a column, and and then you can just you know review it. And uh, I think it's pretty cool. You know how you can uh, like for example, this is for Switch One uh, for the demo. This is for uh, the configuration file for the lo lo login two, configuration file for login three. Uh, you know the switch, and then so so I think that that that's very helpful. And um, so so let's go. Uh, it, it tells me where where do I want to unzip these files. So I'm gonna unzip these files to a folder I choose. So I'm just gonna go to to downloads. That's fine. Unzip. And once they're unzipped, you can access them as a text file. Uh, let's see, you want to use Notepad, and boom, then you have your 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 configuration file for Leaf One, for example. Let's open the configuration file for Leaf Two, and let's see if we can do a side by side. So that's I think that's pretty cool. It's, uh, it just make things a whole lot easier, and then you can uh, you can get all this uh, stuff and, and and organize it in a fashion in, in a fashion that you can document and share with your uh, technical folks or students. I guess that's it for now. I hope you. So basically, just to to recap, this is the Dell Fabric Design Center tool that is available online. Once you create an account, you can actually uh, play with it, you know, create complex configurations. And once I go into the more complex configurations, I'm going to go, I'm going to come back and create them here. So that way you can get a hang of it. Uh, signing off. Have a great evening, day or morning. <laughs>